Okay, so last week I told you I would do this and I wasn't kidding. I love Marvel and DC's D-list villains. I love them so much. So much. Jobber dudes with very specific gimmicks especially. Especially with corny costumes. I can't get enough of them. Well, hey, how about a swarthy Frenchman with a mustache who the purple costume who uses a sword and specifically sword-based hijinks. Absolutely inject it directly into my veins, please. Uh, and what if this character has a very specific comic history with recently introduced MCU characters like Kang, Agatha Harkness, and others that their inclusion might point to a specific direction that the MCU is going. Well, baby, that's why we do what we do on the Doomcast. And by we, I mean me. This week, we're talking about the Swordsman. I'm Dan Umpton, and this is the Doomcast. First off, thanks for checking this channel out. I drop a video about once a week, and they're all pretty great and very fun, so do me a favor and click subscribe and hit the bell, because they're all fantastic. Thank you. Anyway, there's this somewhat untapped period of comics from between when the Core Avengers team got formed with Hulk, Cap, Iron Man, Thor, Wasp, Ant-Man, and Hawkeye, that there was this revolving door of characters on the team. Now, of course, some of them are noteworthy names, or Wonder Man, Vision, Scarlet Witch, Black Panther, and Quicksilver, but there were many, many more, including Beast and all sorts of people. Uh, now, we recently got introduced to the Black Knight, who's one of them, uh, and on the small screen, the Swordsman. See, Jacques Duquesne goes by the name The Swordsman. He was created in 1965 by Stanley and Don Heck, and he first appeared in Avengers number 19. Now, his skill with a sword is peak level. He's a normal human being, but he's a peak athlete for his age, and he's versed in multiple forms of melee combat and armed with a sword that does vastly more than just cut like a sword is supposed to, but it dispels paralytic gas or energy blasts as well, a quiver of trick arrows, veritably, uh, in one weapon. Now, Duquesne applied uh, to become an Avenger despite the protestation of Hawkeye that Duquesne was a criminal. And he should know because Hawkeye was as well, but reformed of course. Uh, he also knew Duquesne as he had trained Hawkeye in swordplay and melee weapons while they were both carnies. Hawkeye's other mentor was a guy named Trickshot, who <laughs> on the nose, uh, as you should be if you're shooting arrows. Uh, anyway, he focused on the bow. But you did hear that, right? They were carnies, cotton candy, cigarettes, turkey legs, meth, carny. Apparently you can have that on your resume and be an Avenger. Anyway, worth noting. Duquesne first picked up a sword as a French colonial... Oh, yeah, he was a colonial. Shit, I like this guy. Anyway. Damn it. Uh, anyway, he grew up in the French colonial occupation of the fictional Southeast Asian nation of Sien Kong. But when the revolutionary overthrow of the colonials happened, Duquesne joined the Sien Kong revolutionaries and fought alongside them until he discovered that the communist leader had murdered his father. Well, his father was a colonial, so yes? Anyway, this upset Jacques, and he ended up in the United States with the Carson Carnival, as you do, the famed revolutionary to Carney pipeline. Anyway, flash forward to his attempt to join the Avengers, dude manages to get past despite Hawkeye's protests and despite trying to kidnap Captain America because the Mandarin, yes that one, uh, put fake Iron Man in to vouch for him. Uh, Swordsman then ends up with an Avengers ID, which honestly he's not all that bad at for a time until he betrays the Avengers to the Mandarin, who'd given him all of his cool sword enhancements to begin with, uh, even if he did end up double-crossing the Mandarin in return. Mm -hmm. But years later, upon rejoining the Earth's Mightiest Heroes, he ended up falling for Mantis. No, not that Mantis. This Mantis. Yes, that's right. Uh, and this is where things get kind of wild, because due to some belief on Kang's part that Mantis would birth some sort of celestial messiah, Kang captured the Avengers, including Scarlet Witch, as well as Agatha Harkness, uh, but he left the Swordsman behind, and that ended up being his fatal mistake, because the Swordsman, by and by, ended up saving both the Avengers and Mantis at the cost of his own life. Well, sort of. Never mind the fact that he ended up getting resurrected as a sentient plant person that tried to murder the Earth and then got his ass handed to him by T'Challa. It's sure weird that Harkness, Kang, Swordsman, and Scarlet Witch are all introduced or reintroduced in their current form, in the case of Wanda, uh, in the last year. Is there a possibility of seeing that weird arc or elements of it with a cosmic super baby or even Kotati plant people in the works at Marvel on the big screen or small? Hard to say. 
Possibly we'll see elements of this pulled into future films, but meanwhile I do expect in the immediate future for Hawkeye to present itself with a relatively harrowing grudge match pitting Jacques Duquesne against Kate and Clint. And if I had to guess, this is a pretty legit possibility that Clint's not going to survive. Only time will tell. I'm Dan Umpton. This is the Doomcast. We'll see you next week.